Macbeth, Act 5, Scene 1. A doctor and a waiting gentlewoman enter. I've stayed up with you for two nights now, and I haven't seen any evidence of what you were talking about. When was the last time you saw her sleepwalking? Since Macbeth went to war, I have seen her rise from her bed, put on her nightgown, unlock her closet, take out some paper, fold it, write on it, read it, seal it up, and then return to bed, remaining asleep the entire time. It's unnatural to be asleep and act as if you're awake. When she is like this, besides walking and performing various activities, have you heard her say anything? She says something, sir, but I will not repeat it to you. You can tell me, you really should. I will not confess it to you nor to anyone else, because there was no one else to witness her speech. Lady Macbeth enters holding a candle. Look, here she comes. This is exactly how she always looks. And I swear it, she is fast asleep. Watch her. Keep hidden. How did she get that candle? It stands by her bedside. She always has to have a light next to her. Those are her orders. You see? Her eyes are open. Yes, but they don't see anything. What's she doing now? Look how she rubs her hands. She often does that. She looks like she's washing her hands. I've seen her do that before for as long as 15 minutes. There's still a spot here. Listen, she's talking. I'll write down what she says, so I'll remember it better. Come out, damn spot. Out, I command you. One, two, okay. It's time to do it now. Hell is murky. Nonsense, my lord, nonsense. You are a soldier and yet you are afraid. Why should we be scared when no one can lay the guilt upon us? But who would have thought the old man would have had so much blood in him? Did you hear that? The Thane of Fifth had a wife. Where is she now? What will my hands never be clean? No more of that, my lord. No more of that. You'll ruin everything by acting startled like this. Now look what you've done. You've heard something you shouldn't have. She said something she shouldn't have said. I'm sure of that. Heaven knows what secrets she's keeping. I still have the smell of on my hands. All the perfumes of Arabia couldn't make my little hands smell better. Oh, oh, oh. What a heavy sigh. Her heart is carrying a heavy weight. I wouldn't want a heart like hers even if you made me queen. Well, well, well. I hope what she's saying is well, sir. This disease is beyond my medical skills, but I have known people who sleepwalked and weren't guilty of anything. Wash your hands. Put on your nightgown. Don't look so frightened. I tell you again. Banco is buried. He cannot come out of his grave. Is this true? Too bad, too bad. There's a knocking at the gate. Come, 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 come. Give me your hand. What son cannot be undone? Too bad, too bad, too bad. Lady Macbeth exits. Will she go to bed now? Yes, right away. Evil rumors are going around. Unnatural acts will cause supernatural things to happen. People with guilty and deranged minds will confess their secrets to their pillows as they sleep. This woman needs a priest more than a doctor. God forgive us all. Look after her. Remove anything she might hurt herself with. Watch her constantly. And now, good night. She has bewildered my mind and amazed my eyes. I have an opinion, but I don't dare say it out loud. Good night. Good doctor. They exit. Act 5, Scene 2. Menteeth, Kathness, Angus, Lennox, and soldiers enter with a drummer and a flag. The English army is near, led by Malcolm, his uncle Seward, and the good Macduff. They burn for revenge. The wrongs they have suffered would make dead men rise up and fight. We'll meet them near Burnham Wood. They are coming that way. Does anyone know if Donald Bain is with his brother? He is definitely not there, sir. I have a list of all the important men. Seward's son is there, as well as many boys too young to have beards who will become men by joining in this battle. What is the tyrant Macbeth doing? He is fortifying his castle at Dunsinan with heavy defenses. Some say he's insane. Those who hate him less call it brave anger. One thing is certain. 
he's out of control. Now Macbeth feels the blood of his murdered enemies sticking to his hands. Now rebel armies punish him every minute for his treachery. The soldiers he commands are only following orders. They don't fight because they love Macbeth. Now he seems too small to be a great king, like a midget trying to wear the robes of a giant. Who can blame him for acting crazy when inside he condemns himself for everything he's done? Well, let's keep marching and give our loyalty to someone who truly deserves it. We're going to meet Malcolm, the doctor who will cure our sick country. We'll pour out our own blood to help him. However much blood we need to give to water the royal flower and drown the weeds to make Malcolm king and get rid of Macbeth. Let's proceed on our march to Burnham. They exit, marching. Act 5, Scene 3. Macbeth, a doctor, and attendants enter. Don't bring me any more reports. I don't care if all the things desert me. Until Burnham Wood gets up and moves to Dunsinane, I won't be affected by fear. What's the boy Malcolm? Wasn't he born from a woman? The spirits that know the future have told me this. Don't be afraid, Macbeth. No man born from a woman will ever defeat you. So get out of here, disloyal things, and join the weak and decadent English. My mind and courage will never falter with doubt or shake with fear. A servant enters. May the devil turn you black, you white-faced fool. Why do you look like a frightened goose? There are a thousand... Geese, you idiot! Soldiers, sir! Go pinch your cheeks and bring some color back into your face, you cowardly boy. What soldiers, fool? Curse you, the pale face of yours will frighten the others as well. What soldiers, milk face? The English army, sir. Get out of my sight. The servant exits. Seaton, I'm sick at heart when I see Seaton come here. This battle will either secure my reign forever or else topple me from the throne. I have lived long enough. The course of my life is beginning to wither and fall away, like a yellowing leaf in autumn. The things that should go along with old age, like honor, love, obedience, and loyal friends, I cannot hope to have. Instead, I have passionate but quietly whispered curses. People who honor me with their words, but not in their hearts, and lingering life, which my heart would gladly end, though I can't bring myself to do it. Seaton. Seaton enters. What do you want? Is there more news? All the rumors have been confirmed. I'll fight until they hack the flesh off my bones. Give me my armor. You don't need it yet. I'll put it on anyway. Send out more cavalry. Scour the whole country and hang anyone spreading fear. Give me my armor. How is my wife, doctor? She is sick, my lord. But she is troubled with endless visions that keep her from sleeping. Cure her of that. Can't you treat a diseased mind? Take away her memory of sorrow? Use some drug to erase the troubling thoughts from her brain and ease her heart? For that kind of relief, the patient must heal herself. Medicine is for the dogs. I won't have anything to do with it. Come, put my armor on me. Give me my lance. Seaton, send out the soldiers. Doctor, the things are running away from me. Come on, sir, hurry. Can you figure out what's wrong with my country? If you can diagnose its disease by examining its urine and bring it back to its health, I will praise you to the ends of the earth, where the sound will echo back so you can hear the applause again. Pull it off, I tell you. What drug would purge the English from this country? Have you heard of any? Yes, my lord. Your preparation for war sounds like something. Bring my armor and follow me. I will not be afraid of death and destruction until Burnham Forest picks itself up and moves to Dunsinane. I wish I were far away from Dunsinane. You couldn't pay me to come back here. They exit. Act 5, Scene 4. Malcolm, Old Seaward, and his son, Macduff, Menteith, Cathness, Angus, Lennox, Ross, and soldiers enter marching with a drummer and a flag. Kinsmen, I hope the time is coming when people will be safe in their own bedrooms. We don't doubt it. What's the name of this forest behind us? Burnham Wood. Tell every soldier to break off a branch and hold it in front of him. That way we can conceal how many of us there are and Macbeth's spies will give him inaccurate reports. We'll do it. We have no news except that the overconfident Macbeth is still in Densening and will allow us to lay siege to the castle. He wants us to lay siege. 
Wherever his soldiers have an opportunity to leave him, they do, whatever rank they are. No one fights with him except men who are forced to, and their hearts aren't in it. We shouldn't make any judgments until we achieve our goal. Let's go fight like hard-working soldiers. Soon, we'll find out what's really ours and what isn't. It's easy for us to get our hopes up just sitting around thinking about it, but the only way this is really going to be settled is by violence. So let's move our armies forward. They exit, marching. Act 5, Scene 5. Macbeth, Seaton, and soldiers enter with a drummer and a flag. Hang our flags on the outer walls. Everyone keeps yelling, Here they come! Our castle is strong enough to laugh off their siege. They can sit out there until they die of hunger and disease. If it weren't for the fact that so many of our soldiers revolted and joined them, we could have met them out in front of the castle, man to man, and beaten them back to England. The sound of a woman crying off stage. What's that noise? It's a woman crying, my good lord. Seaton exits. I've almost forgotten what fear feels like. There was a time when I would have been terrified by a shriek in the night, and the hair on my skin would have stood up when I heard a ghost story. But now I've had my fill of real horrors. Horrible things are so familiar that they can't startle me. Seaton comes back in. What was that cry for? The queen is dead, my lord. She would have died later anyway. That news was bound to come someday. Tomorrow, and tomorrow, and tomorrow. The days creep slowly along until the end of time, and every day that's already happened has taken fools that much closer to their deaths. Out, out, brief candle. Life is nothing more than an illusion. It's like a poor actor who struts and worries for his hour on the stage and then is never heard from again. Life is a story told by an idiot, full of noise and emotional disturbance, but devoid of meaning. A messenger enters. You've come to tell me something? Tell me quickly. My gracious lord, I should tell you what I saw, but I don't know how to say it. Just say it. As I was standing watch on the hill, I looked toward Burnham, and I thought I saw the forest begin to move. Liar and slave! Punish me if it's not true. Three miles from here you can see it coming. A moving forest. If you're lying, I'll hang you alive from the nearest tree until you die of hunger. If what you say is true, you can do the same to me. My confidence is failing. I'm starting to doubt the lies the devil told me, which sounded like truth. Don't worry until Burnham Wood comes to Dunsinane. And now a wood is coming to Dunsinane? Prepare for battle and go. If what this messenger says is true, it's no use running away or staying here. I'm starting to grow tired of living, and I'd like to see the world plunged into chaos. Ring the alarms, blow wind... Come, ruin. At least we'll die with our armor on. They exit. Act 5, Scene 6. Malcolm, Old Seaward, Macduff, and their army enter carrying branches, with a drummer and a flag. We're close enough now. Throw down these branches and show them who you really are. Uncle Seaward, you and your son will lead the first battle. Brave Macduff and I will do the rest, according to our battle plan. Good luck. If we meet Macbeth's army tonight, let us be beaten if we cannot fight. Blow all the trumpets. They loudly announce the news of blood and death. They exit. Act 5, Scene 7. Trumpets and the noise of battle. Macbeth enters. They have me tied to a stake. I can't run away. I have to stand and fight. Like a bear. Where's the man who wasn't born from a woman? He's the only one I'm afraid of. Nobody else. Young Seaward enters. What's your name? You'll be afraid to hear it. No, I won't. Even if you were one of the worst demons in hell. My name is Macbeth. The devil himself couldn't say a name I hate more. No, nor could the devil's name be more frightening. You lie, you disgusting tyrant. I'll prove with my sword that I'm not scared of you. They fight and Young Seaward is killed. You were born from a woman. Swords don't frighten me. I laugh at any weapon used by a man who was born from a woman. Macbeth exits. Trumpets and battle sounds. Macduff enters. The noise is coming from over there. Tyrant, show your face. If someone other than me kills you, 
The ghosts of my wife and children will haunt me forever. I can't be bothered to fight these lame soldiers who only fight for money. I'll either fight you, Macbeth, or else I'll put down my sword unused. You must be over there. By the great noise, it sounds like one of the highest ranking men is being announced. I hope I find him. I ask for nothing more than that. Macduff exits. More battle noise. Malcolm and old Seward enter. Come this way, my lord. The castle has been surrendered without a fight. Macbeth's soldiers are fighting on both sides. Our noble men are battling bravely. The victory is almost yours, and it seems like there's not much left to do. Our enemies fight as if they're trying not to hurt us. Sir, enter the castle. They exit. Battle noise continue. Act 5, Scene 8. Macbeth enters. Why should I commit suicide like one of the ancient Romans? As long as I see enemies of mine alive, I would rather see my sword wound them than me. Macduff enters. Turn around, you dog from hell! Turn around! You are the only man I have avoided, but go away now. I'm already guilty of killing your whole family. I have nothing to say to you. My sword will talk for me. You are too evil for words. They fight. You're wasting your time trying to wound me. You might as well try to stab the air with your sword. Go fight someone who can be harmed. I lead a charmed life, which can't be ended by anyone born from a woman. You can forget about your charm. The evil spirit you can serve tell you that I was not born. They cut me out of my mother's womb before she could bear me naturally. Curse you for telling me this. You frightened away my courage. I don't believe those evil creatures anymore. They tricked me with their word games, raising my hopes and then destroying them. I won't fight you. Then surrender, coward, and we'll put you in a freak show, just like they do with deformed animals. We'll put a picture of you on a sign right above the words, come see the tyrant. I'm not going to surrender and have to kiss the ground in front of Malcolm or be taunted by the common people. Even though Burnham Wood really did come to Dunsinane, and I'm fighting a man, not a woman born, I'll fight to the end. I'll put up my shield and battle you. Come on, let's go at it, Macduff, and damn the first man who cries, stop, enough. They exit fighting. Trumpets and battle noise. The trumpet of one army sounds a call to retreat. The other army's trumpet sounds a call of victory. The victorious army enters, led by Malcolm, Old Seaward, Ross, the other thanes, and soldiers, with a drummer and a flag. I wish all of our friends could have survived this battle. In every battle, some people will always be killed, but judging from the men I see around us, our great victory didn't cost us very much. Macduff is missing, and so is your noble son. My lord, your son has paid the soldier's price, death. He only lived long enough to become a man, and as soon as he proved that he was a man by fighting like one, he died. So he's dead? Yes and he's been carried off the field. Your grief should not be equal to his worth, because then your sorrow would never end. Were his wounds on his front side? Yes, on his front. Well then, he's God's soldier now. If I had as many sons as I have hairs on my head, I couldn't hope that any of them would die more honorably than he did, and that's all there is to it. He is worth more mourning than that, and I will mourn for him, he is worth no more than that. They tell me he died well and settled his scores. With that, I hope God is with him. Here comes better news. Macduff enters carrying Macbeth's head. Hail, King, because that's what you are now. Look, here I have Macbeth's cursed head. We are free from his tyranny. I see that you have the kingdom's noblemen around you, and they're thinking the same thing as me. I want them to join me in this loud cheer. Hail, King of Scotland. Trumpets play. It won't be long before I reward each of you as he deserves. My thanes and kinsmen, I name you all earls, the first earls that Scotland has ever had. We have a lot to do at the dawn of this new era. We must call home all of our exiled friends who fled from the grip of Macbeth's tyranny, and we must bring to justice all the evil ministers of this dead butcher and his demon-like queen, who, rumor has it, committed suicide. This, and whatever else we are called to do by God, we will do at the right time and in the right place. So I thank you all, and
and I invite each and every one of you to come watch me be crowned King of Scotland at Scone. Trumpets play, they all exit.